Steiner and this is my final presentation. It's on MGM Resorts and sports betting and how both kind of intertwine over the last couple of years. So before we get into sports betting in general, I want to take a quick second to talk about background just for gambling in general in the state. So Nevada was the first to offer gambling starting in 1931 when the Wide Opening Gaming Act, Assembly Bill 98, was legalized. But that didn't include sports books. Um, the first sports book in Nevada opened in 1949. And kind of a fun fact on that is Nevada would be what would introduce what they call juice or the vague. It's basically how casinos make their money on sports betting. So let's say a player wants to win $10 on a game. Um, they would have to wager $11 to be able to win that 10 And that $1, you know, they call that the big or the juice, and that's how casinos make their money. Since obviously the casinos really don't care who wins as long as they have an equal, an equal amount of money bet on one side and then bet on the other. So then whoever wins, it doesn't matter. They keep all that, that juice or that big. And then Nevada would be the only state to offer live sports betting, you know, for years to come. They would have a monopoly, and we'll see how that goes. So why is sports betting important? And these numbers come from the Las Vegas Center for Gaming Research at UNLV. And it shows some historical benchmarks from the years 1984 to 2019. And you can see in that time period, the total amount bet on sports in Nevada was just over $92 billion. And that's the money bet, not, not one, just bet. The amount that was won by Nevada sports books since 1984 was just over $4.5 billion. So in about a 25 year span, Nevada Sportsbooks won $4.5 billion on sports betting. You can see that football is the biggest um, bet sport that's bet on, $33.8 billion in, in total bets, and then um, $1.7 billion amount won in football bets since 1989. Basketball will be number two, and then baseball is number three. Those are your basically three biggest sports. We move on to how Nevada got its monopoly. So, in 1992, Nevada was the only state that allowed sports betting in all forms. Three other states had some allowed some betting in some capacity. Delaware offered three team three team and up parlays. So to make a bet in Delaware, you had to bet at least three teams. You couldn't just bet one or two like you could in Nevada. Montana, um, they allowed betting pools. They were really small. They were usually would see like little square games where you put money on a certain square, and if that square hits, you would win whatever's in the pool. And then Oregon was a third state. They had similar options as Delaware, but they really didn't offer any sports betting. It wasn't really that big of a deal in Oregon, so it really never got off the ground. And then ironically, in 2007, Oregon went an outlaw sports betting for the time being. But New Jersey wanted to offer sports betting along with other states. They had casinos in New Jersey. They wanted to basically get a cut of that action that Nevada was getting with their casinos, New Jersey wanted that to happen in New Jersey. But many professional sports leagues at the time were worried about more states offering sports betting. They were worried that it could easily lead to integrity problems if games could be more easily bet on than just only betting on one state. So that brings us to PASPA, the Professional and Amateur Sports Petition Patient Act. Um, this was brought up by the leagues. You know, As we said earlier, they were worried about more states allowing sports betting. Uh, PASPA was introduced in 1991 to make sports betting legal in all but the four states that currently offer it. And all the commissioners of the big leagues, the NBA, the NFL, and Major League Baseball, all those commissioners spoke out in favor of no more states offering sports betting. They were happy with the four that is. They thought that should be enough. Um, and it was passed by both the House and the Senate, and it was signed into law into 1992, basically, you know, now officially making sports betting legal in all but those four states. So after that happened, New Jersey is still not done fighting for its rights to offer sports betting. It badly wanted to offer sports betting. It saw the revenue potential that sports betting brings. So in 2011, voters of the state approved an amendment to the state constitution to allow sports betting. And then after that happened, in 2012, then Governor Chris Christie would sign it into law you know, to allow sports betting in the state. However, it was quickly challenged in the courts by various entities, and the law was taken down in 2014 without ever any sports betting ever happening in the state. So after that happened, New Jersey tries again in, in 2014, and while they were unsuccessful initially in getting sports betting legalized, 
They ruled to get its case heard at the Supreme Court level on if PASPA was unconstitutional or not. And if the Supreme Court found that PASPA was deemed unconstitutional, it would allow New Jersey to then offer sports betting to its residents. So the Supreme Court hears arguments about repealing PASPA in 2017. And a key difference this time around is that most sports leagues have come around to legalizing sports betting. Just like New Jersey, they saw potential revenue streams and income generation from sports betting. So they were now more happy to allow it compared to, you know, 1992 where the majority were against it. New Jersey argued that the current system just pushed betting to underground and illegal ways. People were still betting even if it was illegal. And so to make it legal, New Jersey argued that we could bring millions up to the surface. And some of that money obviously would become taxable, which would help everyone you know, that needed obviously tax revenue. And then in 2018, the Supreme Court agreed with New Jersey and deemed PASPA unconstitutional, which now paves the way for states to legalize sports betting. So this obviously was a big deal for every state other than Nevada. They can now, under they can now decide whether or not they offer sports betting or not. So once that passed, states did not waste any time on legalizing sports betting. Only one month after it was deemed legal, both New Jersey and Delaware had full sports betting capabilities up and running. And by the end of 2018, five more states would legalize it. Mississippi, West Virginia, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island. Then in 2019, six states legalized sports betting, and then four more have legalized it so far currently in 2020. Um, all You can see on the map, all those states in green have some form of legal regulated sports betting industry. The states in yellow, they have passed legal sports betting bills, but they have not yet launched, so they're getting there, but just not have launched uh, as of this point. And then the blue states are currently considering some form of sports betting leg legislation within their state legislators. So you can see on this map, a good chunk of states either have sports betting, are trying to get sports betting, or consider thinking about it. So... No longer does Nevada have a, have a monopoly, it's now spread all across the United States. So that brings us back to MGM Resorts. So obviously PASPA took away the monopoly Nevada had, and that was something MGM benefited greatly from, from having multiple sports books in Las Vegas. You know, before PASPA was revealed, if you wanted to make a legal sports bet, you had to come to Las Vegas, and MGM had multiple sports books and casinos where they would take your bet. However, it's not a real complete loss for MGM, since they do have properties elsewhere in the U.S., in Mississippi, in Maryland, in Massachusetts, Michigan, in Ohio, in New York, where, you know, if sports betting became legal in that state, they could then offer sports betting through whatever casino property they have in those states. So it wasn't a complete loss for MGM Resorts. So MGM Resorts was slow to embrace technology and sports because they had a monopoly. They had to come make a bet in a traditional sports book environment, which you see in the top picture that, you know, that's what a sports book looks like. You have to come to a window, you have to place a bet there. That was really the only option, at least from an MGM sports book. However, mobile apps were becoming, you know, more and more important in the, you know, starting around 2010 or so. MGM did not offer a mobile or internet betting option until 2017. So you can see they let a lot of time go by where someone could legally place a bet on an app. And then what MGM came out with was a partnership with IGT. It was called Play MGM. It's the bottom two pictures on the screen here. So this was their answer to the you know mobile and internet betting, which is becoming more and more prevalent and a much more bigger deal as we got closer to passive being repealed in 2018 compared to you know live betting, you know, in the you know the 1990s, 2000s, and 2010s. However, after MGM's app w was, you know, was delivered, it really didn't, it didn't move the earth. It wasn't seen as a big deal. A lot of people didn't like it. There was, you know, glitches and it, it didn't, it didn't serve the needs as well as it should have, unlike its competitors. So let's talk about some of its competition. We'll talk about one of the biggest ones in the game, William Hill Race and Sportsbook. They're a company from the United Kingdom. They were the first U European company to be licensed in the state of Nevada. They entered the market in 2011. They acquired a company called American Wagering Inc. And American Wagering had developed an app in 2011 for mobile wa wagering that William Hill obviously took, a, took control over when they bought the company. This app was the first app that was on the Apple, Play, on the Apple Store for iPads. 
so people could you know download it and be able to place a bet anywhere within the state. Uh, William Hill currently runs over 100 sports books in Nevada alone. They recently acquired Cantor Gaming in 2019. It gives them a bigger presence on the Las Vegas Strip since at the time Cantor Gaming ran sports books at the Cosmopolitan, the Venetian, and the Tropicana. So we, that brings us to Stations Casinos. They were the first to market for with the with the sports betting app. Their app launched in 2010. So you can see how long it took MGM. When we say MGM, the app didn't launch until 2017. Stations had an app and running in 2010, which was big for them because, as we know, they are a locals market. They don't really deal with a lot of tourists. So their their players are people who live in the state who would like to make bets from you know the safety of their couch. They offered low betting, low betting deposit minimums as well as they offered comps for betting on sports. So they offered one dollar in comps for every five hundred dollars you bet on sports. Which at the time, MGM did not offer anything for comps after their app launched in two thousand seventeen, where Stations has been offering comps for sports betting since they started. Our next competitor is obviously probably the biggest one in terms of you know retail as well as MGM Caesars. Caesars was late to the game too. Their app didn't launch until late 2017, pretty similar to MGM. They didn't really look into uh, mobile sports betting as much as they should have, just like what MGM did. Um, they, however, they did offer points with your credits for bets, unlike MGM and Play MGM. So when you made a bet on Caesars app, you got credit, just like if you were playing in a slot machine or a table game. That was their big advantage over MGM or sports at the time, even though both apps launched about the same time. Now we go to two more, basically what we call the disruptors, which would be DraftKings and FanDuel. So both of these um, companies, they're big in the um, fantasy and daily fantasy world. Um, you know, that's where both these companies got started, you know, in the late, two, late you know, 2000s, around 2010 or so. And they were big in the daily fantasy sports. But as some research has shown, the daily fantasy sports player also likes to bet sports. They're pretty much similar. They kind of run the same thing. Both of them are trying to like, hey, how can I get an advantage? How can I win money? And so once PASPA fell in 2018, both DraftKings and FanDuel entered the New Jersey market. Uh, FanDuel was bought up by another European bookmaker called Paddy Power to enter the U.S. market. This was their way of getting in and getting on the ground floor of you know sports betting in New Jersey. Whereas DraftKings went in it alone, but they were the first to market in New Jersey in 2018. Both of these apps are offered in numerous states, but one kind of interesting to make is Neither one of them is licensed in Nevada to offer their apps in the state of Nevada. So we've seen all our competition. We've seen kind of where MGM is lacking. So what is MGM's response to all of that? So MGM knew it needed to better post PASPA. They don't have a monopoly. And now not everyone has to come to Las Vegas to make sports bets. So what did MGM do? They partnered with the uh, European company GVC Holdings. They created a 50-50 joint venture between MGM Resorts and GVC, which became what is now known as Roar Digital. Roar Digital's only focus would be to run all sports betting retail and digital platforms. Their whole, their whole purpose is to, you know, grow the whole sports betting initiatives that MGM and GBC want, you know, to do better. So, to do that, they obviously needed help. And one of GBC's acquisitions over time was a company called Stadium Technology Group. And Stadium Technology has been one building sports betting apps for companies in Las Vegas for a long time. MGM is actually one of their most recent customers, but as of you know this, this presentation, their application and their software is used by a majority of companies on the Las Vegas Strip. So GVC basically come, you know, convinced Roar and Stadium to work together to create a new betting application to replace you know, Play MGM. And that new betting application will become what is known now as BetMGM. And you can see the new app on the screen here. BetMGM launched New Jersey first as kind of the trial one. They wanted to make sure everything went well. And, and Stadium and um, GBC has, has offices in New Jersey, so they were able to do um, regulations better there. Uh, and so in, it launches in Nevada in March of 2020, BetMGM. And BetMGM becomes basically the whole new company. This is now the brand and the focus for MGM Resorts and GBC. So we see MGM, uh, BetMGM becomes the brand. Um, all the sports books in Las Vegas, they were all rebranded to Bet MGM Sportsbook. All of the software that the sports writers you see in the bottom right-hand corner, those are the soft, they were new software for sports writers, so everything could be integrated. 
And then the last big technological increase for imaging resorts was introducing kiosks. And you can see a picture of the kiosk here on the left. And these kiosks kind of help a few different ways. One, they're always open in the casino as long as the casino is open. So if you wanted to make a sports bet at three in the morning, you couldn't do it at a sports book because the majority are closed. Usually they close around 10, 11 o'clock. And so these kiosks, they're open pretty much 24 seven. So if you wanted to make that sports bet, you know, after you just got done playing blackjack, you could go to this kiosk and make that sports bet. So it helped, you know, give more options to people that wanted to bet at all times. The other key thing that the, that the kiosk helped is that they would allow to help with crowds during busy times. You know, in, in the sports betting world, the Super Bowl, March Madness, they are two of the busiest times of the year. People come from all across the U.S., even to Vegas, even though it's still, it's legalized down their states, people still come to Las Vegas and, you know, in troves to be able to bet. And, you know, these kiosks basically gives another way to make a bet where you don't have to go to a, a race sportsbook rider. Just more options to make bets. So... MGM Detroit launched sports betting March 11, 2020. And basically, this was this was the first big collaboration between GVC, between MGM Resorts, and basically this Roar Digital to be able to get a, an entire sports book package, the retail, the kiosk, up and running in a new jurisdiction. Um, the state of Michigan allowed sports betting. They, uh, this, the law was signed January 1, 2020, and the sports betting was legalized March 11, 2020, which is also the same day that MGM Detroit launched their own sports betting. They off, they launched the retail version, they launched the kiosk. They would have launched the uh, mobile, but right as of right now, Michigan does not allow mobile gaming, at least not currently. They're planning to do it in the future, but once that happens, MGM is obviously ready and ready to go with mobile betting. So in conclusion, when we tie in MGM Sports to sports betting, so that obviously they had a they had a head start you know, being in Nevada, pre passport repeal, they had the sports books, they had the brand, but they didn't do anything with it. They were slow to roll out of a sports betting app. They were one of the last companies to do so. And then obviously once passport was repealed in 2018, that put them, you know, kind of behind the eight ball where they were behind, they were losing market share. There's new companies coming in, lots of issues to be in. So their response, you know, to create this joint venture with GBC to create War Digital. And that now, with Roar's main focus, you know, they are their key three pillars, retail, kiosk, mobile. And now that you've got this one joint venture with, this is all their focus. Now you can do better when things change in the, in the mobile world, where now in-game betting is becoming bigger and bigger. So now, did your mobile app offer in-game betting? Play MGM did not, bet MGM does. And so that's obviously a key thing. Obviously, retail is still important. People still want to go to a sports bank, make a bet, and then you tie in kiosk now. So MGM now has these three pillars of technology, of you know usefulness with this joint venture to be able to continue on and make sure they still are a leader in the sports betting industry. So that's my presentation. Thanks, everybody. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it.